All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Sunday, it is noon, and you know what time it is. It is time for DCWF Full Tilt, the longest and uh, hell, longest running, most successful wrestling fan in the whole damn planet of Second Life. DCWF brings you Full Tilt today. I am the commissioner, numbers the Bolversini, and it's her pleasure to be sitting next to me today, Kristen. <laughs> we got some good special wrestling action for you today. Don't forget to mark your calendars for April 25th. DCWF will be going to Bikers Bayou for DCWF Hog Wild, and we got some stuff in store for you. You do not want to miss it. Kristen, how the hell is you today? I guess their tongue didn't come through customs. All right, we got a special surprise for you right now. Former DCWF World Heavyweight. She's so excited she doesn't have the words. Former DCWF World Heavyweight Champion and current chaos for the contract holder, Mythal Wojcik is going to be. There he is. There he is. Ever since winning the chaos for the contract match, Mitha Wojcik has opened an issue, uh, issued an open challenge to anybody. Anytime he steps in that ring, anybody that wants to come and take that contract out of his hands is free to do so. And you see him, folks. You see him. He's in the ring right now. He's dressed. He's ready to go. He's got the contract. He's ready to put it on the line. But does anybody in the back have the testicular fortitude to step into the ring with the... Oh. You have it, Damon Starlight, New Orleans, Louisiana, weighing at 180 pounds, answering the call of the Celtic Dragon Mythal Wojcik from Swansea, Wales, weighing in at 119, uh, 198 pounds. A little bit of a size advantage over Damon Starlight, but Damon Starlight uh, has been around in the business as long as anybody, and he is out here and he is ready to take on that contract. That contract is good for a title shot anywhere, anytime, as so long as you have a referee to cash in. It could be at the bathroom at the Burger King if you get a match. That's why when Michael goes to the bathroom at the Burger King, he locks the door. And referee Real James with the call in this opening match, and we are set to get DCWF full tilt underway. A little sportsmanship to start this one off. Here we go, collar elbow tie up, and we are ready. Any bets on this one today? All 
All right, headlock takedown from Mithil Wojcik, and uh, the Damon Starlight has been in the ring with Mithil Wojcik before, but has never, uh, the stakes on this one haven't necessarily been as high for him, so he gets this opportunity right now to show what he's got, and he reverses uh, fighting out of that headlock takedown. Mithil Wojcik to his feet, Damon Starlight off the ropes. Oh, and that spinning kick, Mithil Wojcik goes down. Damon Starlight with the energy here. Oh, and that big splash. Yeah, he's working hard in this first spot of this match to, like, try to win right away, which is probably foolish because everybody that's ever watched Mithil knows that he's in it for the long haul and has, like, those extra reserves of energy that can take him deep, deep into a match. And um, trying to put him away this early is probably not going to work. But... I mean, kudos to the dude for trying, you know? Well, you know, you, sometimes you just got to come out and you got to see what uh, what you can throw out there. And then uh, if, if you're smart, you could uh, control the pace of the match from there. But uh, Mithil Wojcik and that arm drag getting out of the way. Mithil Wojcik is so quick and so fast. Uh, you really, you can't, uh, you can't give him a second. You can't let him breathe. No, and I say this every time Mithil's in the ring. Um... Anytime that you give him even a millisecond to recover or to like recoup any energy, um, you've you've made a mistake because he's going to use that a hundred and ten. Like he's going to use that energy and then some to try to put you away. You got to keep on him. You got to keep him down on the mat. You can't let him get on his feet. You can't let him use his arms. You can't let him get to the ropes. Like he is a dangerous weapon in all respects. And Letting him like, get, like, taking any pressure off of him is a complete mistake. And, um, you know, as a former champion, you, you got to expect that he has that type of talent. So. Uh, he has that type of talent, and he's holding the contract right now. So, you know, uh, he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of bullseye on his back since he's putting it up for grabs. And Demon Starlight, with that drop kick off the top rope, to next Mithil Wojcik might be. Uh, might be in a little bit of trouble here. I don't know if he's going to be able to work his way out of something like that. That leg drop following up. We got a great full tilt lined up for you today, folks. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you TP in your friends, TP in your enemies, anybody that likes great. And it looks like Damon has all the energy in the world and isn't even, like, a little phased by all this running around he's doing right now. Stand, standing there watching Mipple get back up to his feet and then coming off with that, uh... That's something that he came down on the ropes with. Well, love it. Uh, trying to take Mithil down. Looks like he caught Mithil unawares. And uh, now Mithil's back on the ground now. And, uh, oh, but Mithil with the small package pin. Again, you can't let Mithil even get a little, like, a second of air, you know, because he'll reverse everything on you. You know, he's good with his Mithil stuff. He's good with his flying. And I hear he knows how to barbecue brisket really good, too. Yeah, is that what you hear? <laughs> Man of many talents. Yeah, and it looks like Mithil's going to catch that kick that Damon tried to lay on him. Ooh, and then use his elbow to really lay in some damage. And then he's going to go with those spinning back kicks and a rolling soul butt. Now he's up on the rope, comes on down with the split-legged moonsault. Yeah, um, he's just showing off now. He's showing Damon, hey, dude, this is how you do it. <laughs> this is how a former champ does it. This is how someone who has years and years in the industry, you know, puts on a show. Yeah, well, Mithil Wojcik has, has carved his own path and, and, and forged a way for, for many to, uh, to, you know, often imitate but never duplicate, uh, you know, his high-flying uh, ultra-technical style. And there's that abdominal stretch. And Damon Starlight, uh, that, that head of steam he came in with is slowly starting to fade. Well, he's got to be feeling that, right? Like, that's got to, that's like his body's getting all twisted up, pulled around the wrong ways. He's got to be feeling that now, I would think. Like, that's going to impact his ability to move from here on out, um, one would imagine. One would. One would. But uh, Damon not giving up there, holding on. Mithil Wojcik goes ahead and breaks the hold. Oh, and a big right and a big left, followed by another left. 
and another right. Mithil Wojciech laying in those punches and that spinning back kick, putting some of that martial arts background to use. And what the hell that was, I have no idea, but Damon Starlight stopped him dead in his tracks, kicked him in the face, put him down on the mat. Damon Starlight uh, still has some gas in the tank here. Pretty sure that's called the zippity Buddha, in case you were wondering. The Shabadoo. Oh, no, zippity Duda. You know, it's like when you zip over here and then you do that other thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And Damon Starlight looks like he's uh, he's got some designs to get on that top rope. And there he goes to the top rope, measuring Mithil Wojcik. And that was the Shabadoo off the top rope. Actually, that was a missile drop, too. <laughs> oh, I know Shabadoo sounds like a good name. Maybe it's like, maybe it's a, <laughs> a special version of a missile drop kick. You don't know. <laughs> And now the pin. One, two, Mithil Wojcik getting his shoulder up. But David Starlight would certainly raise his stock if he were able to uh, win this match here and get a hold of that briefcase. It looks like Mithil's starting to feel a little wear and tear as this match goes on. Um, gotta wonder though, like, you know. Ooh, and Mithil was stalking him and runs up behind him and grabs him with that rear naked choke. Just wrenching it in there. Yeah, Mithil uh, Wojcik. Got the uh, rap asking game if he submits, and, and, and I don't think that Mithil cares if he's getting ready to submit yet or not, because he's going to just take him down to the ground and lay in some more pain and wrench it in tighter. He's going to force him to submit here, it looks like. Uh, Damon is looking like his eyes are fluttering, fluttering there a little bit. Seems like he might be going to sleep on us. Um, it looks like the ref is in there checking, and yeah, we, there we go. Mithil Wojcik with that rear naked choke manages to pull it out. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, the Celtic Dragon, Mithil Wojcik. WF Full Tilt fans, once again, ladies and gentlemen, from Belfast, Northern Ireland, weighing in at 110 pounds, she is Emma Gray. Thirty pounds. She is Samara. Ooh, Weaver. Keep me locked up in your broken mind. I keep searching. 
never been able all right dcwf women's division action right now here on dcwf full tilt we want to remind you that we do this every sunday at 12 noon slt and of course this is a number one new contendership match for the slcw um which is going to be defended by kira scarbridge at hog wild we got it going on kira scarbridge holding the slcw women's champion this is the number one contender will it be samar will it be emma going on to hog wild to face for the slcw women's championship and we are about to find out Miss Amara over the weeks has tried to insert herself in the SLCW women's title scene, and uh, she finally she finally got a shot here. Finally got her shot as uh, she's now able to contend the number one contender. Emma Gray started off with a kick right to the midsection. However, Samara, uh, fresh, fresh face in the DCWF. She's got a long way to go, but thus far she's proven herself a capable and worthy competitor. Emma with a brutal side headlock straight, uh, kind of punching Samara straight in the face there. And I don't know if that was so smart because Samara's proven herself to be a pretty ballsy and tough girl there. And um, I don't know if you want to piss her off like that this early in the match. <laughs> Ooh, and there comes Emma back in with a drop kick. Getting some air on that one right to the face of Samara. Samara now down on the mat. Emma Gray had the chance to capitalize here and uh, make some headway. Well, but instead she's going to bring Samara back up to her feet. I don't know if I would have done that. Samara's a pretty big chick and I would think that if, you know, she gets running too hard, she can knock you down. But it looks like uh, Emma's going to take her down in that arm drag and she's going to work that arm a little bit. And it looks like the ref is checking in. on Samara. And I don't think Samara's going to give up quite this easy yet, though. I think uh, from what I've seen, she seems to be a little... She seems to be a little crazy, too. So <laughs> I'm not surprised that she's going to keep going, even though she's kind of taken the brunt of it so far this match. Ooh, and there she goes with a great big eye rake to Emma's face. Um getting a warning from the ref and then with that huge hip toss taking emma down to the ground slamming her hard into that mat um she's got a, a, a bit of height and a bit of weight on emma so you know i would imagine that she's kind of just like feels like emma's probably like a rag doll to her Ooh, and there she goes with those kicks to the thighs that's going to make sure emma's not going to be flying so easy um you know, at, at least not for a little bit here, because that leg is going to be sore. And as if that wasn't enough, she's going to stomp on her some more. That's a lot of stomping. That's a lot of, like, bruised muscles that could be going on there. Hurt joints. Well, that's the idea. Punish your opponent. I mean, this is, uh, this is a wrestling... Show not a DDT class. Yeah, and Immigrate getting sit into the corner. In a lot of trouble so far. Samara controlling this match. Nikki Gray looking for that opening. Well, Samara found her chance there when she got that got that um, eye rake in and uh, has just capitalized it in a very smart way. She is fighting to be a number one contender, um, and, and it seems like she wants to make a great impact here at the DCWF in her, you know, kind of opening weeks here of her actually officially joining the roster. And there she goes, laying in that foot choke on, on Emma, using those ropes as leverage. Uh, the ref counting, counting a bit. Uh, looks like uh, she's going to break that hold. But she's going to maintain control and start dragging Emma out from the corner. And, uh, the fans are on Samara's side here. 
Oh, and she's going for a pin. She's going to get two, it looks like. And that is all that she's going to get right there. But it was, a, I think, you know, she had a good chance of getting that with all that, you know, all that damage she was dealing there. The, the choking and the leg kicks and all that. I'm, I'm not surprised she got a good solid two count there. Emma fight her way out of some trouble with that jawbreaker. Tomorrow on the attack, but Emma able to get that jawbreaker in there, buy some room, get some distance, regroup a little bit. Mama T at ringside with Samara. Wonder if Mama T is going to be a factor. Picking Samara up and lifting her into the corner. Running into, the, into that corner and with a hard corner splash, climbing, I'm, I'm climbing Samara up against that turnbuckle. You know, all sorts of pain going on there. Those things digging into her back and getting smashed in the front. And then it looks like Emma's going to grab her in a front headlock and drag her into the center of the ring. Ooh, and then neck and the inability to take the neck breaker. And go for him. Emigre managing to turn the tides a little bit in this match as an opportunity here to wrap things up. But uh, Samara holding on, she's just as tough on the receiving end as she is on the giving end. That DDT, Samara back down on the mat. Emma Gray looking to, look at a, I don't know, she's in the corner. Maybe she's going to go up high. I don't know. And there she goes. She's up on the turnbuckle measuring. Samara making her way to her feet. And that flying crossbody with a pin. One, two, no. Samara gets the shoulder up. Tomorrow finally making it away to her feet. Emma Gray standing tall here. Emma Gray has the upper hand, at least for the moment. Oh, and Samara fires through with that big clothesline. And it is a big clothesline because Samara's got a big arm on her, especially compared, like especially with the height she's got and stuff. to the gut followed up by the face breaker Emma Gray finding herself on the receiving end once again and slowly losing some of that momentum that she built up if she hasn't lost it all already this might be this this might be a big upset for Emma because Emma's been Emma I, like I remember back in December Emma gave quite an impassioned uh, speech to the crowd about how she deserved a shot at the SLCW and she wasn't happy then she certainly was not happy when she came out here and everybody else was throwing their hats in the ring. 
And uh, now it looks like Samara might pull out a win here on top of her. And I, I imagine this is gonna, this is gonna make Emma even more mad if that's what happens here tonight, folks. And uh, that kick out though, uh, Emma Gray living to fight a little bit longer. Emma Gray, the vet in the ring, she's she's definitely uh, she's definitely getting her introduction to Samara here in this match and another abdominal stretch. And Mama T looking on from the outside. Samara doing very very well against Emma Gray. Uh, has a, has a puncher's chance here if she could manage to keep wearing her opponent down. And Mama T now, it looks like she's tossing something over to Samara. Brass knuckles, apparently. Samara looked like, uh, this, this could, this could not end well for Emma Gray right now. And Samara charging in. Emma Gray getting that leg up with a super kick. Clinton is flat on her ass. And it looks like uh, Samara is fighting to her feet. She's getting to her feet. She looks a little stunned and dazed. And Emma's jumping up on that turnbuckle and coming down with Ireland's fall. And not many people get up from that. And we'll see if Samara will. One, two, three. There's the pin. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Emma Ray. Here we go. Uh, we got one more match coming. We got another match coming up tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, from Japan Town, San Francisco, California, weighing in at 225 pounds, he is Shirio.
And his opponent from El Paso, Texas, weighing at 295 pounds, he is the chain breaker, Bender Garcia. Shirio take it on chain breaker and Xander Xander Garcia. Get ready to start this one off and Xander tries to grab Shirio. Shirio gets out of the way. Xander is a beast of a man, but Shirio with that wily agility he brings to the table. No doubt in my mind that they each got their pros and their cons, and we're going to see them all in a match like this. And Xander going to the other side for that clothesline. Shirio able to get out of the way and blowing that black mist, Muda style. tie up and that that chop from Shirio and a side headlock from Xander but Shirio stomping on the foot kicking him in the leg Xander with that wrist lock great technical ability Shirio working his way out of it quite acrobatically though into the lock lock uh, the lock lock pretty original name for a move there and an Irish whip Xander going in and those shoulder thrusts just pounding Cheryl right to the corner and monkey flipping him out Cheryl however rolling out of the way able to absorb that punishment And that Shogun drop kick, sending Xander back into the corner, but not down. And the curse rolling elbow. Shirio bringing the intensity here into this match, Kristen. Swinging neck breaker. And the pointed elbow drop. With his pointy elbows. Oh, and the standing senton. Shirio all over the place right now. Xander's really able to get a word in. Edge by the pin. One, 
two. Two count only, Xander muscles his way out of there. Is the crowd chanting Huga Chaka, Huga Chaka, Huga Chaka? Because I'm going to start singing Hooked on a Feeling any moment. I can't tell what this is. I can't tell what this is. And now Zander has that front face lock hooked in, and Shirio works his way out, getting that Muay Thai backspin kick in. Oh, Zander catches him, however, in those elbow strikes. Right to the face, Zander now grabbing him and picking him up with force. And he's got him up in position, but is holding him there, showing that size and that strength. And drops him down. And then goes here not letting up. Into the midsection, Julio fires back over the series of kicks using that martial arts background. Dana Garcia not able to absorb that. Goes down to the mat. Momentum stopped for the moment. Oh, and Shirio with that bicycle kick. Gotta watch out for a guy like Shirio. He doesn't necessarily need to use his, uh, his hands. He can wrestle you and kick you with his legs. There's a pinfall. One, two. Two count only. Yay and shit indeed. <laughs> Yay what? and shit. Yay and shit. I actually say that in real life. I'll be at work and somebody will be like, hey, look. I'm like, Yay and shit. It's funny. And another kick from Shirio. I, w I would damn near say that Shirio could wrestle this match with his hands tied behind his back. Oh, and Xander picks him up and drops him into the mat and picks him back up. Xander now, uh, oh, got him up. The X-Plex, and here's the pin. One, two, two count only. Both of these guys throwing everything but the kitchen sink at each other. I've been out front guillotine. Gotcha! Gotcha! Well, that looks like Shirio is going to grab that rope and, and not go and hit the ground. It's just going to save his body a little bit because that ground isn't exactly soft. No, it's not at all. Uh, after that gotcha plex, Shirio able to hold on. And he goes for another kick, but I think Chainbreaker's got his, uh, got his number now. And he takes him down and starts working on that leg. Those legs have been the bane of Xander Garcia's existence this entire match. Yeah, that big fist. Oh, and no, a drop kick. To the knee, Shirio is still working out uh, how to keep Xander down. Here's the pin one, two, and three. Ladies and gentlemen, with the kick from hell, your winner, Shirio. A kick from hell right to the face gets the job done in short order here.
Goes into the... Giving the crowd some attitude. They'll make it play the pack into the... Uh, So I think it would be safe to say he's not real happy right now. All right, more DCWF Women's Division action right now. Ladies and gentlemen, from Baldwin, Florida, weighing in at 118 pounds, she is Jetsy. Let's get elevated. I'll never know. All right, Jaxie Villano, Carmelita Marcel. Carmelita Marcel uh, has, ever since she has, I don't want to use the words graced her, graced the DCWF with her presence, but I, I can't come up with anything better. Uh, has just come out here week after week after week and been impressive. And Jaxie Villano, uh, one of the, uh, the greatest vets in the business today, uh, also the DCWF women's chaos contract holder. Uh, these two are about to go at it. And, and I, you know, uh, look, the DCWF Women's Division is uh, each and every week coming out here and putting on uh, a hell of great matches. And these two definitely not going to be an exception to that. Yeah, I said hella great. What? And Jack's getting out of that wrist lock using a cartwheel. I can't do a cartwheel. No, that's not something you're capable of. Oh, I'd, I'd wind up in the hospital. I might could attempt a round off, but it would be like... It just wouldn't look very pretty. Ooh, and Carmelita with that big fist. And another right hand from Carmelita Marcel, and she came to fight. And you can see uh, different styles here between the two, but uh, the little Cajun tear, you know, has had a message for all the Kuyans and Chevrets 
in the back that she is in a DCWF and they are on notice and Jaxie is no exception to those being put on notice. And reverse Irish whip, Carmelita Marcel finds herself in the opposite corner. Jaxie Villano stalking her prey, if you will, taking that opportunity. She's coming off the ropes, heading over coast to coast style, one into the other, and a big corner splash. Carmelita Marcel gets caught up. Referee trying to get the uh, trying to get him out of the corner, but uh, you know she's staying the hell out of the way too, right? And there goes Jaxie laying in those punches in the corner. And Jaxie's laying those punches in hard, um, and then going with that monkey flip. Well, she was just obeying the referee. The ref said, "Get it out of the corner." So yeah. monkey flip. he's being a good, good. Very wrestler, what she's doing, right? And there's a moaning cat. I know that. I know that. Moaning cat. Huh? And Jackie. And it looks up. like Jackie's going to the top rope and coming off the huge front leg, front flip leg drop. Front leg flip drop. Is, there's no way Carmelita's getting up quick from that one. Front leg flip drop indeed is the pin. One. One only though. Carmelita gets her shoulder up. Well, Carmelita is a tough customer. Oh, no flies on Carmelita for sure. It's just that Jaxie's been able, at least up to this point, been able to get Carmelita to wrestle her match. And the rolling bridge pin. Referee on the count. One, two. Oh, two count only. The Carmelita not willing to give it up just yet. With the way these two are fighting, you'd think that they were fighting for a title here or something, but it's I believe this one's just for pride, folks, and for and, and you know, just to show who's who's better than who. And and Jackson being a former DCWF Women's Champion, a former SLCW Champion. She stands a very good chance of walking away the winner of this match, and and um, I think it would, but it would be like a huge like notch in Carmelita's belt, as it were, to to pick up a win here against somebody of the caliber of Jaxie. So I mean, both women have got something to prove in this match. It's just a matter of who can pull out the win, right? But do you think do you think Carmelita would still think Jaxie's a, a, a crouton after this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Carmelita now laying in uh, those knees right to the thigh of Jaxie Villano and hooking that leg. One count only as uh, Jaxie gets up, but Carmelita herself looking to do some damage here. Uh, and, that, and Carmelita Marcel has a has a has a dangerous streak to her. She could definitely punish her opponents in the ring, and I think she's had about all she could stand of Jaxie. I think I don't think Carmelita has much patience for any but for any of the women at the DCWF because she wants to prove, her, prove that she's better than all of them, and she's got a big enough attitude to do it too. It's just a matter of you know facing each one of them and winning every week. And oh, there comes Jaxie with the cat's cradle. I don't know how easily Carmelita is going to get out of this one. I don't think she's expecting Jaxie to basically like wrap herself like a pretzel around her. The ref asking if Carmelita submits and Carmelita is slowly dropping to one knee, but she hasn't submitted yet. She's saying uh, she, no, but they're falling out of the cat's cradle with the, the silver spoon and she could reverse it. See what I did there? Looks like she's trying to pull her way to the ropes now that she's on the ground there. Jaxie's letting out a mighty roar. Is that what to, that was? Trying to, to use everything she's got to stop Carmelita from making it to the ropes. Carmelita grabbing that rope and the rest stirring her count. Jaxie quickly breaking. Not wanting to get disqualified. 
playing fairly, all that good stuff. Actually, Villano now uh, dragging Carmelita to the center of the ring. Carmelita Marcel worked her way out of the cat's cradle. But she is still not out of the woods yet. Jaxie Villano on the assault with that stomp. Well, that looks like it took a lot out of her, you know? Well, you know, like, just, just putting on a submission hold is enough to wear you down. Yeah. Oh, and the D-Elevator. And Carmelita Marcel in trouble now as Jaxie Villeneuve is getting pumped. She goes off the ropes and the knee drop right to the right to the midsection, right to the shoulder. And the pin, one, two, a little kiss on the nose, but it did not do it. Carmelita Marcel is digging down way deep and kick it out of these pins but is she going to be able to she going to be able to find an opening is she going to be able to find a spot to get back into this match or is she just going to be on defense the rest of the time oh and there comes Jackie with that with that uh with that moonsault sorry <laughs> with that code breaker standing moonsault combo uh Carmelita looking like she felt every bit of that. Jackie Villano going to the top ropes now, measuring. And, and this is dangerous territory for Jackie's opponents because Jackie is among the best high flyers at the DCWF. And, ooh, and she, Carmelita rolling out of the way really quick, letting Jackie fully hit the mat with her with her elbow there. I mean, you might call it the funny bone. It's definitely not funny when you hit it like that. Um, Springboard shooting star press. Carmelita trying to mount some offense against Jaxie Villano. She found that opening, getting out of the way of that flying elbow. And now now she has an opportunity here to get it going, to get it on. And she is desperately looking to figure out what to do to Jaxie Villano next because Jaxie Villano can take as much as she can dish out. And that armbar locked in center of the ring. What what does she call her? Jackson's trying to fight through the pain here. Screaming, no, she's not gonna tap. The ref asking Jaxie to tap. Uh, hold on, I, I gotta know get that's my... gonna happen. Jaxie fighting trying to looks like she's trying to fight her way to the ropes. I gotta get my Cajun dictionary. <laughs> Okay. He called her a pouch. That means hillbilly. Oh. It doesn't roll off the tongue quite, you know, like the Beverly Pouches. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Beverly Hillbillies, though. Roll off the tongue. Google's a motherfucker, yeah. Carmelita Marcel with that full Nelson. And now just choking her on the top rope. Referee's going to have to get involved here. Uh, it looks like she's going to let go of that pretty quick. Just wanted to deliver some pain, I guess. Just get any advantage she can. It's like, hey, look what I can do. You yeah. Know? I, I can touch you. I can get at you. Okay, I gotta look this one up too. Pal Tibet. Well, some of these words I've met, you know, given Jackie's, you know, Jackie uses her fair share of like French words and stuff too. I'm sure that the two of them are speaking a language they both understand right now. 
So I don't think we need to worry too much about translating for Jaxie. But for the rest of us, we can assume it's not the nicest thing she's ever heard. Um, it means poor little very thing. Very tired, very worn at this point right now. Jaxie digging deep, finding that inner kitty, running out a great big war, climbing up the point of rope shooting, coming back. And Carmelita hitting her with that black hole choke slam in the witch's cauldron. And and then going for a pin in one, two, and three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Carmelita Marceau. You know, Pop to Bet means poor little thing. See, DCWF is not only entertaining, but educational. You're learning some Cajun French stuff. Alright folks, before we get to the main event for tonight, we want to remind you, mark your calendars, April 25th, DCWF is going to Bikers Bayou for DCWF Hog Wild, one of my favorite events of the year. There's going to be bikes and beer and all kinds of things there, and so I'm excited about it. You need to be excited about it. Chrissy, are you excited about it right now? Yeah, I'm totally excited about it. It's going to be an interesting show. It is going to be an interesting show. we got some uh, great matches coming up. Uh, we found out last week that uh, the world champion, Michael Thomas, his opponent will be picked by Jelly Scarbage, the very man who he retired back at WrestleFest. So uh, I haven't talked to Jelly yet. I don't know what he's got in mind. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he'll pick me. I, I don't. All right. Are we ready for the main event tonight then, folks? Ladies and gentlemen, this next match is your main event, and it is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. From Raleigh, West Virginia, weighing in at 240 pounds, he is the journeyman, Brian Bennett. opponent from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 236 pounds. He is the DCWF heavyweight champion of the world, a man, Michael Thomas. Thank you. 
like Brian is ready and raring to go here. Michael's saying, yeah, I'm good to go too. And we're going to face off in the middle of the ring. All right, here we go. DCWF full tilt main event. Michael Thomas and Brian Bennett. Brian Bennett uh, returning to the DCWF, working his way back up the ranks. And hey, this is non-title action, but a win over the DCWF World Heavyweight Champion today would definitely up his stock with the DCWF Championship Committee collar elbow tie-up, and we are underway. Looks like Brian's going to twist that lock up into a wrist lock and start working on the champ's arms there. Michael being the type of guy he is, I can't imagine that that's a good thing for him. I don't know, but Brian Bennett, like, where do you find a tanning bed in West Virginia? I'm just curious. Like, where the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I don't usually go for I mean, don't, isn't there good weather in West Virginia? I thought there was good weather there. Not, like, feather skin good weather. And Michael Thomas, with that uh, Emerald Suplex, just drops him right on his arm. I mean, I know where you find a chanting bed in L.A., for sure, but... And Michael Thomas give it a little bit of, uh, you know... Then him to the crowd, dude. Mm -hmm. And Brian throwing those lefts and those rights. Brian Bennett opportunity here uh, to, to get his name in front of some very important people who are watching this match that could decide his future opportunities. He doesn't want to blow it. In the corner with those ten punches, referee trying to get him out. And it looks like it looks like Michael might be in a little bit of trouble, and that like Brian is Brian is keeping himself on his feet and keeping in control of this match, picking up Michael by you know kind of roughly there. Brian pulling him into that front leg face drop and looks like he's dragging him away to set up for something. He has some kind of some kind of plan, evidently. Well, I would hope he has a plan. He's wrestling the world heavyweight champion. Some people just work on instinct, you know. Only in the bedroom, baby. Oh! Vertical and suplex. there he goes with a great big vertical suplex, slamming Michael down to the ground. Michael's looking like he took the full impact of that on his back, looking like he's in some pain. Must have been part of the plan. Yeah, Brian Bennett uh, smartly staying on the assault here. Indian Deathlock.
Michael getting out of that Indian Deathlock there. Uh, uh, Michael Thomas certainly is not uh, has not exhausted all of his repertoire here in this match yet. Michael on the outside of the ring. Ryan slowly making his way to his feet. Michael's asking for a timeout. A, a move he learned from Horses Morrissey. Um, they've worked together several times during their during during his time here at BCWF. And There's no timeouts in wrestling. He he picked up some some habits from horses, and that would be one of them. There's no crying in baseball either. The ref is up to five. Brian rope shooting, coming off the ropes, coming across the way, and going for a. Uh, yee -yee shot? Woo! Yee -yee shit. I guess I don't know. It's a high flying knee in, in, in any case. It. He caught it. He got it. He got all of it. Wow! And the crowd is wowed and holy shitted by this. Brian high fiving. Into OMG. Referees, go ahead and start in that 10 count, trying to get everything back in the ring. I don't know, though. It looks like, looks like Brian's not in a hurry to get back in there. Well, he's got a few seconds. He could do some damage on the outside of the ring here if he really wanted to. It looks like he was going to try to whip Michael somewhere, but Michael reversed that on him, sending him into the stairs. And referee up to four now. Brian a little worse for where the steps have uh, come undone. Michael in the ring now, leaving Brian to his own devices on the outside of the ring. Michael back out, resetting the 10 count. I mean, if Michael really wanted a timeout, all he had to do is go and stand inside the ring now and let the count finish, and, 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 and the match would have been over. He definitely got his, uh, his timeout. And it but, looks like if Michael is smart, he'll climb back into the ring right here and just wait out the count. Because the count's still continuing. Well, but you said Michael and smart in the same sense. Because <laughs> oh. Michael is smart. Okay. That's what makes him dangerous. Okay. And it looks like Brian's made his way up to his feet. Michael slides back out, slides in and out, breaking the count. Looks like he he's like just he's just messing with Brian now, it looks like. Brian trying. And it looks to... like the ref is gonna keep counting. Two, three. She's gonna keep counting the ref is. Four. And Brian not able yet to recover from that devastating whip into the chairs. Ref is up to six. It looks like Brian is just hurting too much from having those stairs kind of landing on his head and back when he got whipped into them. Up to seven and eight. And it looks like he's not going to be able to climb back in the ring. Michael being the smart one and staying in the ring this time. And showing that he can be a champ without even trying that hard today, because he got it just by throwing a guy into the stairs. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here's your winner by count out, the BCWF Heavyweight Champion of the World, the man, Michael Thomas.
Yeah, sometimes you get, sometimes you get an injury, you will have Break me down.